And okay, and we'll get started. Um, this will be the last lecture. <clears throat> so I'm going to talk two things, and one is the coursework story, but it goes through the requirements, and the other one is um, something called a side drawer that's available in the native script view. So this is something you swipe, so you can see a menu from the side of the phone, which is quite common in many apps. <clears throat> so firstly, very briefly about the coursework three, and uh, the main task of the last coursework and is to rebuild the UI part of your app so far and with native script view components. Okay, and uh, so basically, and the way that native script view works is and you have to use these native components in the sense, say the native buttons or native icons or text fields from either Android or iOS. So that means um, you cannot use um, your old HTML elements. So for example, you cannot have a paragraph or input um, or input and type equal to text. If you remember, that's the HTML elements which give you a text field, which you can type in something. And instead, you have to use something called a label, and which is a new component provided by native script and to replace P and similarly use text field to replace um, text, sorry, input. And that's mostly the works involved. And then that means you can actually keep most of the JavaScript logic, including the fetch. So for example, you have some JavaScript code I don't know, like most of the view code, for example, you read data and change the ordering of the array. These should be the same. And for any fetch, which you use to, um, how do I say, contact the backend REST API routes, and these should, can, should be remained the same as well. It's just the front end part. But the interface components need to be changed. And finally, um, for the backend you build, uh, the MongoDB and Express route, you should be able to use it without any changes. And uh, we, we discussed in the last week how you say make it accessible to the playground, your local routes. So let's just use the uh, tools called ngRock, which you can do that. And other than that, nothing needs to be changed for you any, and say, Express or MongoDB code. Okay, and um, so the details of the requirements are in the PDF attached to the submission page. And so again, this time it's slightly different. I didn't change the module handbook because some people get confused where to get the latest and requirements. So I'll just put it in one place, which is the submission page um, of the coursework. Do you, do you all see the PDF file? Yeah. So I assume you can find it. If not, just go to the submission page, but we just look at the PDF file quickly now together. Okay, so that's the file you would find on the submission page. And so the deadline is 5 o'clock on Friday and week 22. So that basically means next Friday. So you have a bit more than a week from now on. And uh, yeah, uh, in terms of task, you need to create a native mobile app using the playground. So obviously we have been using playground in all the lectures and that's also what you need to do for your coursework. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, as I mentioned already, um, you can definitely reuse uh, the backend created in coursework too. Um, but for front end, and you create the coursework one, you can reuse the JavaScript part and maybe even the CSS part, and, but you can't you reuse the HTML part, and that has to be done using native script view components. Okay, and in terms of submission, there's a few things you can submit. So, uh, so first is obviously the code from Playground, and there is a button there which allows you to download the code. So I give a screenshot here. So 
So basically, and that's the button there. And if you click it, it downloads a zip file with all the code. So basically, and all the directory structure and all the files will be downloaded. So that should be part of the submission. And uh, you also need a text file and including the URL to the code. So that basically is just this URL here. And you, you might have noticed, actually, when you change the code, and this URL will change as well. Actually, it gives you a reference to the code you wrote here. <clears throat> so you need to save that in a text file. Okay, and then the backend node and express code files. So, and if you haven't changed anything from the second coursework, you can just use the same file. Again, just put them in a zip. A, a MongoDB dump. So this is where, and you have a database, you have a copy of all the collections you needed for your app to run. So they're putting a MongoDB dump. And so MongoDB dump itself is a tool so you will find inside the MongoDB directory. If you run it, it will generate a dump file or dump directory. And finally, add everything into one zip files. So that means add all these. Some are zip already, but put everything in one zip file, and you have a maximum file size of 50 megabytes, which should be enough. <clears throat> okay, and any questions? Okay, and then slightly different from previous coursework, and we do not require a GitHub repository this time, and because all your code will be in the playground. So there's no need to have a separate repository to submit your code. And uh, actually, in the playground, you can save your code and of different versions as well. But we're not using going to use that as a requirement for this coursework. <clears throat> okay, and there's some and um, harder requirements. So the app has to be viewed with native script view. So that's what we covered. So we don't want you to use, say, React or any other, say, Java to code your app. Okay, and the code must be hosted on the playground because that's what we covered. Okay, and finally, and the work has to be demonstrated in lab. So the demonstration will happen in the two weeks after the deadline. And so, so basically, next week is when the work is due. We will still have labs, but not lab, not lectures. And then two weeks after that, which is last two weeks of this whole year or term, and we're gonna again have labs as for demonstration only. And again, we have to have lectures for those two weeks. Okay, and also you have to be able to explain your code. Otherwise, I'm not gonna give you any mark for the code, even if it's working. So these are similar to previous coursework. Nothing new. Okay. Um. So the next part is about the actual marking scheme. So the total mark is 20%. So that's excluding the 10% you get from the lab presentation. So each group would have done two presentations by now. So that comes for 10%. These the 20% uh, on top of that. <clears throat> and so this 20% is split between and the user and search order and filter. So the interface will be quite similar to what you did in the lab, uh, like I think it was last week. So you had this, uh, if you remember, you had this two page, like an app with two tabs. One is user logging and register, and the other tab is the list of courses. So each of them will come and 10%. And so, okay, for the user part, and the user has to be, okay, the user has to have sign up and sign in in a separate tab, okay? So that should be quite easy. All it's saying is you need a separate tab for user signing and sign up. So that means you just need to have those buttons and text fields, even if it's not working. So that in a separate tab, you get these 2%. And if you have done the lab task last week, you already get this finished already. Okay, and and then the 
next two points is about actually getting the sign up and signing working besides just have the um, buttons and text field and so for sign up you need to ask at least email address and password the minimum you need to create a user account and but you have to also check make sure they are not empty or invalid okay I guess not empty will be slightly easier invalid and you have to and um, somehow um, make it I guess maybe email address the rules is slightly clear and for the password you can decide what the rules are and for the marking purpose and so long as you can say created the rules for one of these for example you made some rules to check whether the email address is invalid and that's okay and you just don't have checked the password or you do the other way around you create some rules for the password for example it has to be length of eight with a capital and some character and if that's working then you don't need to create anything for email address at least one of them and again so and I think previously in coursework one some of you will be using and um, the default like email field and um, from the HTML5 forms which you can't use here so you have to write these logics yourself now okay so that's the first part to get it working and then the next part is actually being able to save the data after the user entered so you should use the REST, route, REST API route you create it in the second coursework and save the username and the password to the database. So, yeah. So, for this part and saving to the MongoDB, and it is, if it is working in the second coursework, then all you need to do is find the right place to put the, the fetch. Um, in the native script review code okay so that's the um, sign up part and next we'll be signing again four percent so obviously when you're signing you need to retrieve the user information from the database and just to check whether that's correct say for example if the email is already used to uh, register is already registered or whether the password is correct so first, you should be able to retrieve the data from the MongoDB using the REST API. And again, so if you have done this in the second coursework, all you need to do is find the right place to put the fetch code, nothing else. And then, okay, so this is slightly more, and you probably would have done it already, is say, you need to display an error message when email or password is not correct, okay? Um, so basically, in the app, you somehow have to provide some feedback to the user when there's error. So I don't require you to provide very specific and um, feedback. So if you just say it's error, it's fine. You don't need to say, for example, an email is not registered or password is incorrect. You just say an error will be enough. But if you want to do a bit more, then it's completely up to you. And any questions so far? Okay. Okay. And then the search, order, and filter will be in a, a separate tab. And uh, so, and some people ask questions to say, does the user have to log in or register before they can use the search tab or the lesson tab? So no, the answer is no, and that's not required. So even the user is not logged in or not registered, it should still be able to and go to the search tab. That's what should make the code a little bit easier. <clears throat> Okay, and then and the search order and filter and the requirements is actually very similar to what you did in the first and second coursework and actually actually simplified, so not as um, difficult as the first and second coursework. Okay, and so let's start with search. I think search um, is almost the same as before and so you should be able to Retrieve the information from the MongoDB um, using the REST and API route. And again, so we only ask you to be able to do this once, and then you can do the order and filter later on, and locally uh, on the um, client device. Don't have to use further search, sorry, further uh, fetch. Okay, 
And uh, the second point is exactly the same as before, and the search should be on the activity topic only. So if it's a lesson, it's allowing either it's maths or club, not say at the location or the price of the activity. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, and uh, the last one again is same as before. It says the search should be um, progressive. Or say, so basically that means if you enter a T, then any topic contains T should be returned. So that math should be returned and the sports club also should be returned. Okay, so I think this is the exact same as before, nothing changed. Uh, next part is about the sorting and filtering. <coughs> and again, so this has to be in a side drawer. Okay. So if you just manage to put that inside draw, you get 2%. And this is what we're going to cover later after we finish the coursework requirements. So basically, that's a menu. You can swipe in from the side. Uh, the requirements actually for the filter and sort is actually simplified. Uh, <coughs> for the filter and work on the results of search. So basically, you can do a search first and then apply the filter. And then only available options are shown in the filter option. So this applies. Ah, okay. And so for first, and the filter is by topic only. And so you only need to create filter for topic. So you don't need to create filter, say, for example, location or other attributes. And it work, should be work on results of search. So you either can do a search first and then filter. Okay. <coughs> And then only the options that's available should show up in the filter. So for example, if after the search there's no more math classes, then the math should not be shown up in the as one of the options in the topic of the filter. So I think there was a example we had the lecture before and in terms of possible solutions to coursework one, and that covers this part. And uh, you might need to change that code a little bit to make it work in this case but there should be some plenty of code for it to start with okay and the last part is about the sorting and this time is by price only so you only to create sorting for price okay and you need to have the options to do this in two different orders either ascending or descending orders either from lowest to highest or high to lowest, that has to be the option. And sorting must work on the results of searching and filtering. So, and you should be able to perform search or filter first and then do sorting afterwards. And uh, again, I think uh, in the coursework one solution lecture, we covered this as well. And there's some example code, and you just need to maybe make small changes to make it work here. Okay, I think that's it. Yep. Um, so, any questions in general? No? Yeah? Uh, what do you mean, GitHub link? Ah, uh, yes. No, no, yeah, yeah. So in your case, just include a link in the submission file. So instead of a text file containing the URL to the playground, and do that for the GitHub repository. Yeah. Any other question? Ah, no, no, and so. Okay, so the questions is about signing and sign up tab. Right? Yeah. Uh, I think the question is about do you should have one tab for both or two tabs for one for signing, one for sign up. Um, so what required here is just have one tab for both signing and sign up will be fine. If you want to create more tabs for that's just okay, but just the requirement is to say have one tab for both signing and sign up. Any other questions? Okay, this is okay. Um, and then let's go back to the actual lecture slides, and so we're going to cover and the last part. Sorry, 
the side jaw, which we mentioned, you need in the post work, and how do you add, say, the filter and sorting into the side jaw. Okay, um, let's go back to the... And, okay, so and the side jaw um, is part of the component, or more specifically, the user interface component provided by the native script. So actually, and it has all these different components already made in native script that you can use. So it's including list of view, which we actually seen a version already. And the side jaw is the one we will cover today. And these also pro provide calendar, charts, um, data form. So that's the equivalent of the HTML forms. And autocomplete and uh, gorge. Gorge is just like an indicator, like a progress bar, something similar to that. Okay, and uh, so the first one of these is the list of view. And if you remember, we already used list of view in the previous lectures and also labs to show a list of lessons. Okay. And uh, this list of view, um, which is slightly different, uh, it's actually first it's named um, rad list view. Oops. Uh, actually, I'm not sure. Quite, not quite sure why they have rad in front, but that um, happens to all the components. So for each of these, they would have a rad in front of called the right size jaw, right calendar, right chat, etc. And you can also see, and this is the example I'm creating in the list of view. So it can do more complex things than the one we used for the class list so far. Okay, and then for this lecture, I'm going to focus on the side jaw, which is another component, as and partly because that's also necessary for coursework three, and actually it's not too difficult to use the other use um, UI component. And you are feel free to use them in your coursework. We just don't have time to cover here in the lecture. Oh, and so first, uh, many of them, I think almost all of them, are available in the playground that you can drag and drop and into your code. So if it, that means here. So on this side, it's different components. For example, we already know, and um, we can have list view. So that's the list of view there. And then, for example, we're gonna do this called side jaw, and also and side jaw is there, and many of other components is there too. Yeah. Uh, okay. So the question is for the coursework. Do you need pictures or images for the lessons? Uh, and the answer is no, you don't need. We didn't say you have to have pictures. Yeah. Okay, and uh, so that should be quite easy to add these components to your code. And again, there's more information online. Uh, so this will be the page, there's a link there. If you click, it goes here. And that gives you the list of the available components. Okay. And, and I think the only difference is these are the ones which are actually exposed to view. And native script itself has other components as well, which is not integrated with view. Uh, okay, maybe let's say you can look at the chart. It tells you how to add a chart. Oh, it doesn't. Okay. This is what a chart would look like. Once it's added to the page, and uh, well, then it will be on this side, it tells you how to add these. But I think you can just drag and drop from the components as well. Yeah, so I have some examples of the chart here. So I could um, add something here. And it just adds a chart um, to my code. Let me uh, let me 
connect my phone so you can see. So let me just set up the uh, web. Uh, uh, no, I use the other one. This will be web dot air joint. Okay, and then this will be for the numbers. Okay. Mirroring. Okay, to allow. Mm, my device. Okay, uh, so this is what looks currently looks like on my phone. So I can later on show you what the app looks like. Uh, let me make this one a bit bigger, and then I can. Ooh, ah, I can't change the window size anymore. Ah, okay. Yeah, I think that happened before. Even bigger. Okay, um, so I can show you when I preview this one, which I just added a chart. Okay, um, <clears throat> so this is what it would look like. And so these parts uh, are come with these text here, and then you have this one, uh, which is this grid layout here. Okay, and so this is just basically to show you for these different components, you can easily drag and drop. You can pretty sure you can just say drag and bar chart or line chart, and equally easily, and that will go onto your phone. Yeah. Ah. Wow, I actually need to minimize this. Okay, and then, uh, so before you can use any of these components, and the first thing you can, you actually have to import the component. And so the, the concept is very similar, and if you remember previously, we talked about single file components, and uh, before you can use any component, you have imported the file, which create, contains the code for the component, and then register. And it's very similar here. So you will need these three lines, and depends on which component you're going to use, it will be, it looks slightly differently. And the first line, it says import view from B. Oh. Let me see if I can hide. Okay, uh, let me. 
I don't know why I can't select anything now. Okay. Um, so first, and you always this, use this line, and because you want to use this view instance a little bit later on to register the component, so you always have to do this. So import view from native script view. So this is the line you put in in the and playground later and in the script part, and then this line changes and depends on what you want to use. So in this case, we want to use side drawer. So we use native script view. Sorry, native script UI side drawer slash view. So that means it's part of the UI component, and this particular component is called a side drawer. Say for the chart or calendar or autocomplete, we have a slightly different name. And the slash view, that means we are using the view flavor of the component. If you remember, they have different flavors. There's this Angular flavor and also just say purely JavaScript one. And this will be the name of the component. You're gonna call and you can call it different things. And then just say and view.use and whatever the component name you give it here. This is actually quite similar to how you use components in view. Yeah, and so we first need to import view and then we import the side draw component and then register the component. Okay, so once you register the component, then you can use this just like an HTML, HTML element, just similar to labels, text fields, etc. and in your code. <coughs> ah, and uh, if you use the um, drag, and, drag and drop features in the playground, and these three lines will be done for you automatically. And so if we go back to our code, here we imported, if you remember, um, this chart, uh, which is this chart here. So if you go down to your script part, let me make this one slightly smaller again. Okay, ah, uh, yes. And so you can see, and when you drop, drag to drop the components, you can see these three lines created for you. So import view from native script view, and this time is called a different one so it's called rad we mentioned it always has rad in the name this is called the Cartesian chart and from native script view UI chart view and then you use that particular component okay so if you drag drop this will be done for you but you need these three lines and then later on you can use this as an element so you can see here we have Rad Cartesian chart just as elements with some properties, etc. Okay, and then today we don't we're not going to using the chart, so we're going to instead using the okay, and um, instead of just using the oh, I can't delete that one. Instead, we're going to um, use the side drawer, so we're going to import the side drawer very soon. So first, let me see, let me get back to the slides. Ah, okay, and so first, this is what side drawer looks like. And so this is a screenshot and on iOS, I assume. And so you have an entire menu, which is this part. When you slide in from the left, this will show up, and before it will just look like that. <clears throat> okay, and usually um, in the side drawer, you can put in some, say, um, options, filters, settings, or maybe links to other pages. And uh, for the coursework, we're going to put some filtering and sorting options in the sidebar, sorry, in the side drawer, or just called drawer. And obviously, you can swipe again to, towards the left, it should hide. 
or I think if you click any of these space outside the jaw, it would hide as well. Okay, and then so actually for native script, and you can show from any four edges of the screen, so you can have a say it's swiping from the left or right or top or bottom as well and uh, just need to be careful because sometimes if you swipe from the top in my and um, conflict with the default behavior of the system for example usually you swipe from the top on android or ios it will show the notification area then it will get confused whether to show this menu or show the system notification okay and you can also customize the transitions as well and just basically the transition here means the animation of showing how uh, the side draw appears you can customize that as well and um, we're not going to cover those in the lecture but the, you can, if you're interested you can have a lot of documents which have those code examples of how to do this okay and uh, so this is what a default side draw looks like. So that means if you just drag and drop one from the in the playground. So this is what um, it looks like when it's not opened. And if you click this button, say open side draw, it will show you here. And obviously it says some titles, some text or can be links as well. And finally a button here that allows you to close the side draw. Yeah, so that's what we're gonna do now. So let's go back to the demonstration. Um, so now I just drag drop one. Okay, I first want to find the place where I want to put it. And in this case, I might um, remove all these texts that's already there because I don't need any of them. Okay, so that looks better. And then now I put in a side jaw. Okay, just to make sure it's on the right place. Okay, and that's what it comes in. And now I can just preview the code, and uh, you should be able to see it on my phone. It currently looks like this. So that's what happened before we started with empty or default playground app. Add the chart, that's what it looks like. So if I rescan. <coughs> okay, and so if you can see, this is what it looks like. And if you click the open drawer button, and then the drawer shows up. And then you can click close. And we should close down. And if we can click any other empty space, ooh, no. And it's also closed as well. Okay, so obviously, and these things in the side drawer, so the social promotion important stuff, and doesn't do anything yet. And you can click on those, I can click on those, let's see what happens so far. Okay, and we're going to just have a quick look of these code and uh, how, they, how they work first. Back to the slides. Okay, so first is these three lines, which is to an import and register component. We already see that a couple of times before. So import view, import and um, rat side drawer, and then you say view dot use the component. So and these appears in here. And if I close this part, and you can see in the script part, and this is one already done for you. Okay, so that's one to register and import the component okay uh, then this is probably I guess the most difficult part and it's still really relatively easy so the most important thing is to look out for this attribute and this attribute in the code so you would see you have two stack layout elements I'm oh, sorry to rat side drawer oh yes yes sorry and it is inside the stack layout component and so if you have the draw content and it marks the content 
inside the short drawer. So basically, if you have this stack layout and you set um, drawer, drawer content, then everything here in between this or inside the stack layout will show up in the drawer. And so what that means is um, all these things like navigation menu, primary, social, promotions, etc. All these needs to be inside the drawer content tag or whatever tag that has it. So it doesn't have to be a stack layout. It could be, say, a grid layout or something else. But that's the important part. And then similarly, um, you also have a main content part. And so that's the part is what basically that includes what will be displayed when the sidebar is closed. And so again, we go back to our previous example. So these things and the text and the open drawer button will be inside the main content uh, element, whatever that is. So if we look at the code here, <coughs> and you have this and stack layout, and it has this main content. Okay, so just be careful this little thing, which is like a not a straight line, a tilted line, and you had a label, and this text is bind to main content text. That's the binding. And you can see in the code, uh, the main content text is this long line here. So essentially, these are the, if I close this, ooh, ah, I'm not crashing anymore. Mm. Gets disconnected, so it looks like I have to do it again. And uh, no, start. Yeah, okay, it's back now. Ah, uh, um, then I have to go to playground. How to rescan? This message, yeah. Okay, and so basically, uh, these texts shown here is these texts, and they are shown because, um, they are bounded to the label here using this, and this, yeah. So text wrap equal to true is usually useful. That stops the text goes to the goes beyond the screen to the right. Uh, <clears throat> this is usually not recommended. You probably want to put that into the style section of your single file component. And then we have a button, and which says open drawer, and it has a function. When it's tapped, it will say on open drawer tab. Okay, so basically that's open the side drawer. So that's and this button here. Okay, uh, I'm gonna have a look at the buttons a little bit later. What's actually inside this one, which is actually quite easy. Okay, uh, so basically uh, we mentioned you need to look at both the jaw content part and the main content part of the side drawer. So and the main content part is relatively easy. We already see both the label and button. So now I'm going to look at this part. So I didn't show any code here. So these three dot 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 is what um, actually on this slide. Okay, and so that's a stack layout, jaw content, background color equal to gray. Again, it's not necessary if you don't like a gray background, but that's why currently uh, the side drawer has a gray background. Okay, 
and then you had label which is called navigation menu and then inside another one you had primary social uh, promotion and labels so that's why you have these uh, in the app Ooh. oops Uh, still loading now. Put it back. <clears throat> okay. Um. Let's see quickly. And um, so this is the first line of text is navigation menu. So that's why you have this navigation menu here. You said, okay. And the next one will be the text is primary. So that's why you have primary here. And you set the background to light gray. So that's has a slightly lighter background color. And then you have social, promotion, etc. And that's all you have here. Okay. And then finally, you have this one. So it says a label and text is closed. Okay, that's closed. The color of text is light gray, has some paddings. And it says horizontal align equal to center. Okay, so again, so this is a bit different from the normal CSS. Anyone remembers how do you align in normal CSS center text? So, um, a web page. If you want to center text, what do you do? Hmm. Mm. I think the the property is not called the horizontal align, but called the text align. The center, and so here it's a bit, bit different. That's a view. Okay, and again, so this is again a bit different. So even this is just a label, and you can have a tab event and say run some function when the label is tapped so usually you would do this with a button but here it's doing it with a uh, label and as a result the the look will be slightly different for example the close here looks more or less just like a text where well, here is more obviously a button so basically that's using a native button that android has okay and so basically this part, which shows what included, will be disappeared, displayed here. It's just the same as any other native script components or elements you can use. You can put in different things and buttons, even charts, or if you want. And that should work. But also, um, say, in our case, in terms of buttons and filter options, or text fields. Oh, okay, and now we actually so and probably the two most important functions uh, is the show drawer and close drawer function, and you probably would have guessed, and the show drawer will be just show up show the drawer because by default it's not visible, so that's what happens when you click the open drawer button. So that should call this function, and um, show drawer. And uh, similarly, when you need to close the drawer, you click the co close and you call this function. Okay, and so uh, I guess the code is slightly more complex to call the function. And so I say on open drawer tab. So that's the function which is linked to the um, open drawer button. If you Remember, so we can go back and we can go back to the where was the button? Yeah, that's the close button. Ah, here, sorry. So that's the button, and that's the text is called open drawer. And when it's tapped, then the function it's going to run is say um, open drawer tap. Okay, and the, the actual code. Uh, Mm. 
can even do it here. I'll go back to the slides. The actual code is just this. So you can see the show drawer is the final function, but there's a little bit more than that. So first you have say this, that refers to this instance, okay, and this is the reference which will be passed back by when you either click on this one. So basically it will refers to this instance app. And you say for that I want the draw and then dot native view. That's something you have to use, it's a bit different. And then finally show draw. Sorry, show draw. Okay. I mean there's not much too much point to explain what all these different things before the show draw is. You more or less just copy all these and it should work. And once you understand that, then the closed drawer will be easier or quite similar. So that's the function name, which you can call it differently. But the only difference is now the function is called closed drawer and instead of show drawer. And so that means we now when you click on the close here, and it will close it. Yeah. Um, I think that's probably the most important part. So what we're seeing so far is we're seeing, okay, how do you add that to your app and then how to open and close it and how to add, say, different text or buttons into the main content and the drawer content. Okay, uh, we're going to look at a slightly different example now. So this might be closer to what you will need. And for the coursework, and it has two buttons, uh, one just open the drawer, the other one toggles, so that basically means if it's closed, it will open, but if it's open, it will close it. Um, not necessary, just to show you the different functions you can have. And then this is the menu, which is slightly maybe more uh, closer to what is needed for the coursework. And oh, here we're showing filter by location, but I think in the coursework it has to be filter by the topic and then sort by price <coughs> and you have to either ascending or descending and then the close draw button uh, I have the code here oh, okay um maybe I'll just show you and um, quickly what it looked like here I logged in now so I can show you Okay, and so this is the final code, or oh, I think it is. Okay, um, yeah, it looks slightly different, um, but that's more or less what, what it is. So you have two buttons, now they are in the middle instead of at the top. And you click either of the, okay, of course I can't click on the computer. I click the toggle jaw and we have these things show up. And the currently, um, none of these works yet, especially, but they can, uh, maybe it's even some working. But um, for the coursework, and these need to be dynamically populated, so you can hard code this. And in this example, I just load them from a array. And this one, you have to link them to specific functions which change the ordering of the display. Uh, let me see. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Okay, and I'm going to explain the examples. Oh, I'm going to explain the examples I have here. Okay. That's better. And so, obviously, first you need to use the wrap drawer and element, and then you have inside you have two stack layout. And because in, our, in this case, I just want to put things on top of another, that's so I uh, use stack layout. And then you had 
uh, draw content and the main content. So that shows the two different parts. And inside draw, I want to have these things. Uh, so the first, I use the label, say filter by location, and had a class as well, H2, so that you have this filter by location, and which is slightly bigger, similar to the heading 2 and in HTML. And then I try to load this from a array. So I use the V4 location in locations in text and I bind the label text to location. And uh, to have the yeah. And so you can see the location is just array. We see these three um, values or locations currently. And uh, and in your code will be slightly longer than just an array, so you have to uh, somehow extract all the topics from the a list of classes or lessons you have. So that's going to take a little bit more code than this. Okay, and then I had another label, this one, which is again H2 like, and they say sort by price, which is this one here. And then I have two labels, one called ascending, descending. These basically are function like buttons. And if you want to make them buttons, that's completely fine. And the most important thing is say when they are tapped, uh, they should have some functions that will happen. So for example, as for ascending, I will call this function called sort ascend. And then later on you can see here, uh, yeah. Currently, it doesn't really do much. The sort ascend function, all it does is just do a console log, to the message. At least you know the tap is working. <coughs> and uh, similarly, where is the other one? And for the descending, it is linked to a different function called sort descent. So that's all this part. And uh, finally, I have this close draw button and it's the same as before it says when it's tapped it says unclose draw tab and that what it does is here and unclose draw tab it will say this dot reference dot draw ah dot close draw and that's all it is it will close the draw okay let me just double check now you can see this is the log here, which means when the button was pressed. Hmm, okay. Uh, so you can see in this example, which is, did you see any difference between the previous, this one and the one we used before? No? No one noticed? Uh, so this is a slightly shorter. Um, if you look at the previous one. Sorry. Okay, so this is what we did before. Uh, oh, the closer will be this one. So you can see actually here the use native view, which is not the rest is the same. This dot refs, so dollar sign refs dot draw dot close, and this has native view. And here I didn't have native view, but it still works. So slightly less code. Um, anything else? Okay, and so basically this part is responsible for everything inside the side drawer. And as I said, this and the main content, which is say what is going to be displayed when it is closed. So basically, uh, that that means and um, this area, which is covered by the side drawer, what that will display when it's closed is only the main content. So in that sense, everything else should be in the, here in the main content, for example, the list of classes. And in this case, I only has two buttons, one called open drawer and the other one called toggle drawer. And then um, we already seen the open drawer, sorry, the open drawer. So basically it's just call, calling the show drawer function. And then this, the toggle 
draw a button and just call a slightly different function called toggle draw states. So it either basically is a switch between two different states. Okay, and I did some simple CSS in the styles. I made the font size slightly bigger and some paddings, so it's not right to the border. Okay, so that's it. And uh, in your actual cases, I think this should be enough to help help you to create a side drawer. Then you have to make sure those different functions actually works. For example, you want to add more in here rather than just console log. You're actually sorting the classes by par, so by price. Okay, and uh, I think this is the last slide. So if you want to know more, that's the link to the native script view documentation. And then, so yeah, that's the one we've seen before. It talked about all different components. And if you're just interested in side drawer, so that's the side drawer there, some examples. And okay, so it have some additional information, for example, this is tell you how do you put the side draw on top, bottom, left, or right. And then the transitions tells you, okay, how the animations when the draw is visible would look like. There's these the, the different options you can choose. Yeah. So if you're interested, you just have a look at these. Okay, yeah, that's it.